now proudly presented on SNME. That's Sunday night's main event. Patreon and free feed. One never bored, new tools in the latest news. Complex and interesting, take the time out to invest in straight talk, wrestling. Get the facts, get the tables, get the racks, get the stable. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your host, your boy, George McKay. Welcome back to Straight Talk Wrestling. We are in the dog days of summer, and I got a good one, a special one. A lady who caught my eye back in February when she made her Destiny Wrestling debut at Reckless. We're going to talk all about that because I am, you know, the color commentary for an amazing commentary team. I carry it most of the time. Kevin doesn't do a whole lot. I carry everything. Brittany knows that as well. But please welcome Brittany Brooks to Straight Talk Wrestling. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So it's been a minute since we saw each other in February. 2024 mm-hmm. was just starting. Bookings were happening. First ever Dreamwave champion. You are killing it. And then boom, much like anybody with momentum, you're stalled with an unfortunate injury. Talk to me about what's going on with the knee and talk to me about how you're doing in terms of getting back to the squared circle. It sucks, you know, like um, any injury sucks and anything to be like signed line for is just the worst. But I'm definitely starting to realize how much like I value things again. I know like I tore my ACL two years ago. And the recovery for that, I learned so much. And I learned so much about like myself and, you know, how, how I guess to really focus on things other than wrestling that can be included into wrestling. So that's just what I've been thinking about a lot. I'm okay. Um, I had an MRI on my knee and I'm not too sure like what the plan of action is or how long I'm going to be out for, but it's definitely like, it won't be quick or anything. But yeah, I'm still weighing all my options in terms of like surgery and stuff like that. Like, I don't know what we're going to do yet, but I think I'll definitely be back sooner rather than later. That's the goal. And, you know, my biggest goal is to be back before WrestleMania weekend. I know that's far away, but like that definitely is like I need to be back before then, especially because it's happening in Vegas and it's literally only four hours from my house. So I like need to be in it. So, yeah, but my goal would be to come back before the end of this year. I think that's doable. Knowing you, knowing how much of a stubborn individual every pro wrestler can be, a doctor will give you a timeline and every pro wrestler, correct me if I'm wrong, but every pro wrestler will be like, listen, it's going to take you six to eight weeks. I'm sorry, what did you say? You said six to eight weeks. Okay, cool. I'll be back in four. That's yeah. It. It's like every wrestler throws down a gauntlet to the doctor. I'm sorry. You think you know my body better than I do? No, no. no. I'm sorry. You don't. You don't know what I can do. Am I wrong when I say that? Or a lot of wrestlers like, yeah, okay, I'm going to take your challenge, Doc. And I'm going to go ahead and beat it. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you're, you're so right. Because when I tore my first, like my right ACL, they said I would be out for like nine months. I showed up to training like the week after and we got to working on like, literally I had my coach. He was teaching me how to walk again. And then after two months, I got back in the ring and was like, it, everything was really hard, but it was definitely like you can't just keep like I can't just not do anything for nine months and I came back in like six like to actually doing shows so it was <laughs> definitely the stubbornness is super real <laughs> I love that the stubbornness is super real so you had to do something recently that a lot of wrestlers don't like to do when it comes to an injury you also had to vacate a title and you had to vacate a title to arguably one of the sweetest people when she's not in the ring, but when she's in the ring, an absolute, I've, I've called one of her matches as well, Brittany, and I got to tell you, I love Maggie. She's a sweetheart. She's a killer in the ring, but God damn it. She has a face you want to punch. She does. Maggie Lee has a face you want to punch and you had to vacate that title and she came out and she ran her mouth. And I know I saw the video. I saw your fist. You were this close. You were like, <laughs> I want to charge her. I want to spear her. I want to, I want to do a lot of bad things to her. So how did you, first off, relinquishing the title, it's never easy. What was your mindset with that? And then not only to have that hard moment taken away from you, but to have Maggie Lee strut down to the ring and just start running her mouth. First off, everybody is fooled if they think Maggie is a sweetheart. Like genuinely, she's never been that way to me and she never will be that way to me. And I don't know why everyone's like cheering for her all of a sudden, but you know, go off, I guess. But yeah, no, it was really, really rough. And it was hard being back there and seeing everybody. Like normally Dreamwave's like 
probably the biggest show I do, the big, most anxiety I get before going out there because it's literally some of the best in the world are on Dreamwave and there's so many opportunities and it's like, well, if I do well in this match, maybe I'll get a match with this person and just like seeing everybody that's like, and Dreamwave is such a family. So seeing everybody and everybody asking how I was doing, I was just like this point, this close to breaking down. Like it was, it was so difficult, but I knew that had to be done. And I knew that like, I'll be back and I'm coming for that championship literally as soon as I can walk again and do all these things again. That's, and I'm going to smash like Maggie Lee's head into whatever I need to, to get that, that belt back. Cause it definitely sucks. But I also know that there's, there can always be another, but there can never be another first and I will forever be the first ever. So that's a big thing to me. And that's like, you know, I might not have the belt right now. It might be on arguably a bitch, but um, yeah. <laughs> I did say it, ladies and gentlemen. I always try to stay impartial on my show. I did not say it. Brittany said it, and she's the guest. She's running the show. She's allowed to say it. You know what? I will say this, though. I feel like when you two do get that rematch, and you get into whatever situation you're going to get into, whether it be a street fight, because I know you got a lot of aggression you want to work out, and I know that she wrote a lot of checks she may or may not be able to cash. Mm -hmm. So I know that when you say you're going to smash your head into literally anything you can, I feel like you've got a list somewhere of all these possible objects that you could use. Say you look at, you get out of the shower and you look over in the mirror after you've wiped the, you know, uh, mist away from the mirror. And all of a sudden you see behind you, you're like, huh, that shower rod could be replaced. I could buy a new one and I could keep it and I could just, pretend to beat her with it until I get a chance to beat her with it. Do you look around your home or your apartment or wherever you lay your hat and do you look around and you're like, yeah, okay, I could, I could hit her with a TV remote. I could smash her with my old computer. Like, like, do you look at all these things as to what weapons you really want to bring with you when the time happens? I have a pink kendo stick just sitting at my house, ready to, ready to kick some ass. So, you know, and I, I so wanted to bring it to the, to the show before I got hurt. I was like, I'm gonna kick your ass with this kendo stick. But yeah, it's literally pink and rhinestone. And that's absolutely the thing that I will absolutely hit her with as many times as I need to. I love it. It's pink and it's rhinestone. It's like if Barbie had a kendo stick, that's exactly what she would rock. I love it. Absolutely. <laughs> so talk to me about uh, Brittany Brooks as a character. It's you, but it's you turned up to 10. What is the evolution? Because I know your real name. I don't know if a lot of other people out there know your real name. <laughs> but where did the origin of Brittany Brooks come from. What is Brittany Brooks to you? What what made you tap into that part of yourself? I think for sure I'm still learning who Brittany Brooks is because I'm still learning who I am as a person. Like I'm only 19 years old and so much has happened for me in the past like three years since I first like had my first match and everything. And I think I'm still figuring out who I am, but like the biggest thing for Brittany Brooks is to inspire people because that's, the reason why I'm wrestling that's the reason why I loved wrestling was like the people who inspired me and putting all these smiles on these little girls faces I don't know if you saw last time I was at Dreamwave in February I did this little entrance and I was like you know I want to do like a John Cena Wrestlemania type entrance and so basically we pulled like four girls from the crowd like little girls and we gave them the glasses and the little rally towels and it was literally just like the most special thing like it was so heartwarming to like see them so happy to be a part of something and even if maybe you know other little girls weren't the ones who were brought onto the stage like I just want every single time I go out there to people to feel a part of what I do because that's how I felt when I would watch John Cena and the Bella Twins like those are my biggest inspirations in wrestling and every time I watched them I, you know when they were getting beat up like every time I was cheering and rooting for them like to my core and I want people to feel that way to me because it's literally what I'm so passionate about and you know to get to do that on a bigger and bigger scale each year is my goal well I could see it I could see the passion mm -hmm. in you I could see how much you love pro wrestling that's why I love having these conversations and as much as people may think it is an interview yeah okay I do ask questions because I have okay. to but it's more about just getting to know an awesome talent and I love having special talents on the show because I love seeing the progression. You know, we have you on now. Maybe we have you on in two years. Maybe we have you on in three years. And next thing you know, boom, you're signed. And then we get to see that progression. And the story always continues. So this is the first of many conversations, I hope, depending on how well I impress you. I mean, you're 19. Yeah. 
I've got a lot of I got a lot of things to impress because I got a 14 year old daughter at home right up until she was like 11. She was impressed by me. And then as soon as she hit like 12, 13, <laughs> not being impressed by me, she still loves me. I mean, daddy's little girl through and through. But speaking of dads, what do your parents think of this crazy journey that you're on right now? Because <laughs> not everyone could go up to their parents and be like, hey, mom, hey, dad, guess what I did today? I signed up for wrestling school and I'm going to be a wrestler and I'm going to put my body on the line all the time. <laughs> So actually, I remember finding Arizona Wrestling Federation on Instagram because like somehow came across them and we were just out to eat. And I was like, show my mom. I was like, this is the wrestling that I'm talking about because we went to like MMA gyms that had like the amateur, like collegiate wrestling. And I was like, no, this is the wrestling I'm talking about. And I begged her. And when I first started, they had a kid's class because I started training when I was like 14 or 15. So I actually had to have her drive me there and, you know, we sat down and she hated it off the, the off the bat. Like she was like, oh, this is weird. Why, why would you do this to your body? Why do you like this so much? And they knew how much I loved it because every single time WWE would come to Arizona, I had to go to it. I was, I would save up all my money, buy the tickets, buy the merch and just have the time of my life. So they knew that I loved it, but it was definitely hard to convince her to bring me back. Cause after the first time she was like, I don't want you doing that. So it was a struggle. And then once I started to do shows, like she would still come to my shows and it got to a point where like, sometimes it was a little bit overbearing, but I also understand because this is a business with adults and I don't know how to do, like I'm learning how to do business now. I would say I know how to like do business and talk to people and, you know, like protect myself from people. So it was definitely a growing up process. Like I grew up with wrestling as a kid and then I grew up with the business side of wrestling and everything. And then once I started traveling last year, like every single weekend, they started getting like, you know, worried about me because I am like, you know, going out the country and stuff. But I'm also an adult now and I know how to handle myself. And yeah, sometimes there's situations where I'm just like, oh, I don't know about this. But, you know, I have a lot of mentors in wrestling and a lot of people I can ask, like, what would you do in this situation? How would you talk to this promoter? How do you get booked on this? So, like, honestly, now they're okay. It was hard to come home a couple weeks ago and be like, hey, I hurt my other knee. I can't because I didn't want to text them about it. Like the Internet knew before my parents, which I feel bad, but I didn't want to text them about it. Like it was something that I wanted to, like, sit down. And so they were just like my dad was like, hey. If Carrie Von Eric can wrestle with one leg, you can do it. <laughs> and I was like, you know, you're not wrong. And there was a lot, you know, a lot of back and forth in my head last weekend to do, do Dreamwave because I really wanted to do it. And it was just like, I don't want to further injure myself because I also didn't know what was wrong yet. So I don't want to further injure myself and cause myself to be out longer and make irre irreversible damage. So I was just like, you know, I shouldn't do this match. And especially in a cage match, like, that could have went really bad. Like all she would have had to do was just yeet me into the cage a bunch of times and my knee would be screwed. So yeah, but my parents are pretty supportive of it. It took time though. They were definitely super against it. And even last year, there was times where they're like, I don't think you should be doing this. And I was like, no, this is my life now. Like, this is what I want to do. I didn't go to college. I don't want anything else. I want this. So that's also helping me a lot right now. Like since I want it so bad, I'm going to go through the pain. I'm going to do whatever I need to, to get back and to get better. And, you know, ultimately to get signed. Well, the grind, the climb, whatever it takes to get you back to where you want to be. Once you reach that point and you get that like check mark, that green light from the, the doctors to go back in the ring, that view is going to be sweet. When you're on the top of the line and you are driving someone's face into the floor, it's going to be like, damn, this feels fucking good to be back. <laughs> I'm definitely scared to go to the top rope because that was how I hurt my knee. I jumped off in a crossbody and now I'm like, oh my gosh, I should never go up to the top rope again. It's definitely going to take a mental, you know, a few times to get up there and be like comfortable with it for sure. I get that. I get that. But you know what? I want to, I want to switch gears. I want to talk about your debut at Destiny Wrestling back in February. You came to Canada when Canada is, you know, cold, it's covered in snow, the sun goes down at like 4.30, you know, it's not the greatest time to be there, but it was great, it was hot in Oshawa that night, and you had a great match with one of our up-and-comers, Vanna Black, such a good showing, such a good story, what was your experience at Destiny, how much did you like Canada, I don't know if it was your first time in Canada, but what was everything, how did you love everything? It was so fun. Like, I really want to go back, but I know how pricey flights are because I literally live in Arizona. So to get all the way up to, like, you guys are, like, in the Toronto area, that was rough. But no, Destiny was so much fun. And Vanna was super fun to wrestle. 
it was my first time like that weekend was my first time in Canada because I had just done boom over in Vancouver I think on the opposite side so we just flew up to Vancouver so that was like my first ever like weekend and my first time seeing like my first time ever being out of the country so I had never seen you know Canadian money before or you know it was just so cool and so special and I had so much fun at Destiny and I really I've been like really trying to go back obviously now I can't but definitely when I come back I for sure want to get over there maybe if I do like a show on the east coast then I can fly up there hopefully I love that I love and I love the fact that you said our monopoly money is cool and special we thank you <laughs> we do we oh, thank monopoly you money. <laughs> Yo, it's it so is, real it though it does look like monopoly it does. that's what I'm saying right it's like hmm, okay you know yeah let me pay to get out of jail it's all good no problem it's all different <laughs> colors it's like the colors our money looks like a pack of skittles that's what our money it's looks true. like it is it's, it's red purple blue green we're all over the goddamn place I think our hundred dollars <laughs> like we're just all over it, but that's okay Canada is different Canada is different in a lot of the best ways. Um, but you know what? You know what's funny about where you live is that a lot of older Canadians, when they reach a certain age, they beeline it to Phoenix. They love the dry air over there. You have a lot of snowbirds up in Phoenix. So you, while you're trying to get over here, they're trying to get the hell out of here. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's wild to me because it's so hot and I, I literally hate it there. So the second I get to move to Florida, we're out of there. <laughs> For sure. I love that. And I love that Florida's on the goal. That's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. And you talked about inspiration. So John Cena, the Bella Twins, WWE. I know that's where you want to go. NXT is obviously in your sights. What does Brittany Brooks feel she needs to do to get on WWE's radar? What are you, what are you looking for to kick down those doors and say, hey, take a look at me because I'm a can't miss talent, which I believe you are. I'll put my stamp on it now. I think you are fantastic. Thank you so much. I definitely think I'm on their radar but it's like standing out because you know I feel like everybody is kind of on the radar but standing out I think like definitely showing more of my personality on social media and in matches like it really sucks because my match with Kylie was the most fun match I've had that was the one where I just got hurt it was the most fun match I had the most personality I feel like I've shown so if you guys do get a chance definitely go watch that match uh, but yeah it was like it was so crazy because it was the most personality I've shown. And of course it had to be the one where I got hurt, but definitely showcasing that personality and doing better, talking to people more and really just like connecting with more people. I feel like would definitely help. And also I definitely need to work on those like cardio drills. Cause I feel like if I get a tryout, <laughs> I'm not going to be ready for all the cardio that they do. Yeah. I feel like uh, the cardio drills have passed a gentleman of my age by I am only 40, <laughs> But I enjoy getting up and walking down to the fridge and getting myself a piece of food right off the hop. I'm a foodie. I'm a big boy. I'm okay with it. If I had a trial with the WWE and I walked in there like, yeah, you got to do 150 burpees. I'd be like, cool. I'm just going to, I'm going to thank you so much. I'm going to keep the shirt because I'm here and I'm going to just, I'm stepping out. I'm leaving. I'm taking it. Thank you guys later. Peace. You know, that's how I would do it. But I feel like, yes, you got to definitely build up on the cardio and you segue perfectly. See, we're cooking right now with gasoline, you and I. Uh, the match with Kylie Ray, I know it's the match that where everything kind of the little setbacks happened. But how cool was it to share a ring with somebody who, in a lot of ways, and I did watch that match or I watched parts of it when I could catch the full match hasn't been released yet, at least for my end. But once I find it, I will. But from what I've seen, the tidbits that I saw online and what I look for, you two really do mirror each other in a lot of ways. I mean, even the graphic image, you're doing the opposite sides. I mean, I loved everything about it. And you're right. I saw something different in you and what I saw. But before you, you know, before you went down, before we, we we felt the trouble in the knee, we knew what was happening. I mean, how cool was it to share a ring with Kylie Ray? I mean, yeah, she's been around. She's seeing things. Obviously, there's history with Jericho and all that stuff. We don't know what happened. I wish her the best of luck and all that. And I'm glad that she's over it. But how cool was that to share a ring with Kylie Ray? Like, that's awesome. Kylie was awesome. And she's literally the first indie wrestler that I ever knew of because um, there's a guy named Muscle Man Malcolm and he did a video of like top indie wrestlers that you need to watch. And I saw her on there and I didn't know what indie wrestling was. I didn't know that there was anything other than Raw and SmackDown. Genuinely, like, I didn't know about NXT. I didn't know about anything. I would only watch what came out of my TV and I saw her and I was like, this girl is so cool. What the heck? So then I really started watching her and like, her whole personality and how she acts is so like similar to how I do. And it was just so cool to see like, and get to share the ring with her and just see her personality. It was, it was awesome. 
Yeah, I think if you when you get back in the ring, you got to talk to Kylie about possibly forming a tag team. The Smiley <laughs> Twins. I think the Smiley yes. Twins is fire. I think that, and it's great too because when you guys work your way up in that angle, and eventually you break apart, we got to find out who's going to become the Dark Twin. Like who's going to go dark? Who's going to go dark and dangerous with the vengeance? I, I think that there's a storyline there. Go ahead, you can take hey. it. I'll give it to you. There's a storyline there. Take Definitely. It <laughs> I have a, I have a little bit of darkness in me. I can Especially see. towards Maggie Lee. So I can see, yeah, see, and now we're segueing <laughs> back. So Maggie Lee, let's talk about Maggie. Lee. She's gifted. <laughs> she was trained by Seth Rollins. You know, big deal, of course. Um, well, she was trained by a former WWE champion, my dear. That's a big deal. It is. It is, but you can still smack her in the face, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I believe it. I, I would never want to mess with either of you in a dark alley. I know what would happen. Yeah, I would <laughs> lose horribly, and I would. I would, you know, I'd be sad about it, but then I'd be like, you know, I got my ass kicked by a strong, strong female role model for my kids, so I'm okay with it. I am totally fine with it. But what is it about Maggie that drives you up the wall? Like, if anybody looked at your Twitter right now, the Twitter is just, ugh, bitch, hate her. Like, and it's just Sherry clips of everything. It's like, if we were to do the top 10 Britney Brooks tr uh, Twitters, it would all be about Maggie Lee. She is on your mind right now. And I get it. I understand the reasons why. But what is it about Maggie? Like, why is the rivalry so strong so early on in both of your careers? Like, you guys literally hate each other. She jumped me multiple times, then attacked me at an expo. And then, like, I didn't even get at that expo. Later on, we were both in a rumble. And she, of course, entered number seven, but she wasn't good enough to stay in. So she got her little self eliminated, and then when I came in, I didn't get to, didn't get to hit her or anything. So then when I finally got to wrestle her in the, yeah, triple threat with Zeta, you know, she just she just gets on my nerves, and there's really nothing. She's just so rude. Like I genuinely, I mean, did you see her promo? She burned a picture of me. She just does all these things, and I'm just like, I thought we were cool. Like I was super excited to meet her at Dreamwave. And then she just turned out to be an absolute bitch. So I like, there's really no reason for me to like her or appreciate the things that she's done. And then after what she said at the last time, she told me to go sit on a gag disc. She brought up a whole another, a whole ton of things. That's just too much. And I treat everybody with kindness until they give me a reason to not treat them with kindness because they don't treat me with kindness first. And that's exactly what Maggie has done. So that's true. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's true. Listen, I mean, if somebody told me to go sit on a cactus, I'd probably not have a whole lot of nice things to say about them either. And if somebody <laughs> burned a picture of me, I'd probably not have a whole lot of nice things to say about them. But you know what you should do? When you return to Dreamwave, make it a surprise. No one's going to know. Boom. Brittany comes back. Maggie's all shocked in the ring. Oh, my God. You walk out with a cactus. And you just <laughs> lay it down. And you say, girl, <laughs> you're going to sit on this when I'm done with you. And then I love you it. Just, and then you just leave. You leave, and all of a sudden, it's just she's staring at a cactus, and she's like, "What the like? What am I? What am I gonna do?" And you know what? Every time you cut a promo, you have a bigger cactus in the promo Absolutely. with you until you get to the point where the cactus is ridiculously big. She will hurt herself. Like it will <laughs> literally be a cactus the same length as her because Maggie Lee's tall. She's tall. She's got long legs. All those kind of things. I feel though that if you just hold on to the angst and the disdain you have for her and you work through the injury and you recover stronger, you will use that fire to come back better, to come back a better version of Britney that's already been out there. You'll come back tougher, meaner, angrier, but still have a great smile and a great personality. <laughs> and the great thing is, while you're pounding your face in the ground, we'll be able to see the smile. It'll be perfect. Right? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I don't think so. I think I'm good. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk about uh, meeting Lisa Marie. I know you met her at a convention. I know you shared a special picture with her. Your smile in there is like, you can literally see the fan in you. <laughs> you talked about John Cena. You talked about the Bella Twins. But obviously, some of the legends, like Elisa Marie, from that era, they mean something to you. What was it like meeting a, a, a bona fide Hall of Famer in my eyes? She hasn't got the nod yet, but I believe she will soon. Yeah, what sure. was it like meeting a bona fide Hall of Famer like Lisa Marie? It was so cool because Victoria is like someone that I always like look back and watch because she was kind of around before I started watching wrestling. But like I actually met her for the first time last WrestleMania weekend. Uh, we did a show. She actually gave my friend Brooke a uh, 
the widow's peak in the ring because she was like the special guest referee or something I saw her there and then I just kept seeing her at all these conventions and then we started engaging with each other on social media but it was like the first like picture we got was at that convention in Vegas and it was like so special because like she's always willing to share so much knowledge and so much you know of her stories and things that she went through and things that she did it's just super cool to have like that relationship with someone who's so knowledgeable and knows so much so it was really really cool really fun experience we got to take some really cool pictures and yeah no she's always been super sweet and I know she does come down to Phoenix sometimes to do like signings and stuff so I'm like I definitely need to you know hang out with her the next time she's in Phoenix well, you know what? We follow her and I follow each other on uh, Instagram. So I'll make sure when this video drops, I'm going to use this clip and I'm going to tag her. I'm <laughs> Lisa Marie, you got to get your butt down to Phoenix. You got to yeah. see your girl, Brittany. You got to do it up. Now, Definitely. if there was anyone that you could dream match wise that are out there, like a Maria Canales, like a Lisa Marie, mm -hmm. like a Mickey James, anybody from that era of women's wrestling, even a Candice Michelle, I know that she's still in pretty good ring shape as well. If you could narrow down one of those ladies from, you know, when they were really fighting, like those, that era of, of women wrestlers, they had it the roughest. Next to Trish and Lita, when everyone that was coming out, everybody was fighting for time, those girls did. Because Trish and Lita, they opened the door. Those girls had to kick it down. And then the, re the evolution, the revolution, if you will, that tore the whole house down. And everybody was like, women are now as equal as men in this business. They are actually, I'll be honest with you, some women's matches from a commentator's perspective are way more entertaining to call than some of the guys' matches. I'll be honest. I love calling the women's matches because so much energy and I love being able to have these strong women for my daughters to look up to. Just like they have their mom, but all these other superheroes, because you guys are superheroes. But when it comes down to it, if you could pick anybody from that era, who would you really like to, to, have stare, to stare across the ring at and know that this is someone that you would love to pin, but yet you respect so damn much. Oh, you made like a lot of really good points and named a lot of good people. And I'm honestly so appreciative for all of them because I literally would not be standing here talking to you right now if it wasn't for all of those people that you mentioned, but probably Maria Canellis because I could never say enough good things about her. Like she's so sweet and so um, meant, I don't know what the, she's like a mentor, I guess. I don't know if there's an adjective for mentor, but um, she's such a great mentor and she's done so much for women's wrestling. I would be absolutely honored to share the ring with her and she knows so much and she's just, I don't know, just so incredible. And she's such an incredible role model for her kids. Like, I remember the last time that I was at AEW, I ran into Mike and I was just like, oh, where's Maria? And he's like, oh yeah, she's at the dance recital for our kids. And I was like, she's just such a great mother. And she's honestly such like a life inspiration to me as well as a wrestling inspiration. So I would love to share the ring with her. Yeah, she was, uh, somebody was actually special for me because I got a big, when I was a kid, Redheads was my thing, and I always thought Maria was a stunner. I told her that when I actually sat down with her a couple of years ago in an interview. I told her, I said, sorry, Maria, this is a bucket list moment for me. I know you're married. I'm married, but I have to tell you, I had a crush on you since I was like 14. I, I, she's, like, she's like, I appreciate you, but I am happily married. I'm like, I know. Michael whooped my ass. Totally fine. I understand. But she actually gave me one of the best quotes I think I've ever heard from someone in that era, which was, you know, we were the first ones through the door, so we got the bloodiest. And that made a lot of sense in a very profound way because they didn't want to have Playboy Bunny matches. They didn't want to have any of those matches. They wanted to be taken seriously as wrestlers. Even her first stint on camera, she played the dumb backstage interview, which is so beneath her because you hear her speak and how intelligent she really is. And it's it's sad to see where it started, but it's great to see where everything is now. And it's great that you're, you're coming up in an era where women's wrestling is not the popcorn match women's wrestling is the must see match and that's a huge thing and i think that uh the future looks very bright as long as there are talents like you in it and i think well no bro i i feel like i'm complimenting you a lot this interview but it's because i do see something special in you i think you are fantastic and yet the whole world is your oyster and i know for a fact you'll be in vegas next year at wrestlemania weekend and if you are all I ask is that there's a video of you going straight talk. I'm here. That's it. Nothing else. Everyone will know what it means. <laughs> Everyone will know. Straight talk. I'm okay. here. But I want to switch gears to Dreamwave for a second. I want to go back to Dreamwave. You mentioned earlier in the conversation about being the first champion is the most special. It is because your name is etched with that title because you were the first one to hold it. 
becoming a first time title and being the mountaintop for that division, setting the standard for that division at such a young age. That's a lot of pressure. How did you deal with that pressure knowing that you were literally the head of that woman's locker room? When you're the first inaugural champion, that's the company saying, here you go, kid. You run this division. Boom. Crazy. Because I would, I could never thank Dreamwave and Jay for the amount of trust that they put into Zeta and I for, you know, allowing us to have that first ever women's main event, that first ever women's mat, uh, title match. And honestly, it's crazy to me that I could be like on top of a division with people like Miyu Yamashita and Shaza McKenzie and uh, Maki Ito and just all of these incredible women. And like, we always talk about how like before that match, there was never an idea for Uprising. Now Uprising is literally the top women's promotion on the indies. And it's such an incredible place to be. So any women's wrestlers who are watching this definitely hit up Jay and uh, Dreamwave and Uprising because such an incredible platform. I've never seen somebody take names like all those names that I just listed and also put it with people on the rise like me and J-Rod and Zamaya, all these girls that they're giving such a great chance to, to have these literal dream matches. Like honestly, like to wrestle Masha was such an incredible opportunity. And I can't even believe that, you know, I got that and now I have this experience and I'm getting better and I'm allowed to you know be on the level that those girls are and you know all it takes is for a promoter to take a chance on these younger talents and give them the chance you know to come out and wrestle their names and in turn learn you know any everybody gets better when they wrestle somebody who's better than them and that was just such like a, like a meaningful thing it was so unreal, but now I know that that's where I belong on the top of that division. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back to the top and get that title back and show everybody that I run Dreamwave and that I'm the start of something great. And I can, you know, maintain that mainstay position. I love that. It was that really answer, that answer was fire. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It was honestly like really hard, you know, to, you know, vacate the title and then see these posters come out and, you know, not be on them. Like I was on every Dreamwave poster for the past year because my first time there was in August 4th and 5th last year for the summer double shot. And ever since then, I'm just like, wow, like it's, it's crazy to be out, but I know that this is happening for a reason. And I know that I'm going to be back and I'm going to be back headlining and it's just only a matter of time. But it was, it's really hard to see, like, you know, all these promoters, like, posts that I'm having to pull out of these shows and, you know, have all these fans be like, no, like, you know, I have to literally, so I had to pull out of so many shows, like, it sucks, like, obviously I had to pull out of the Maggie show, and then I was supposed to do GCW against Billy the next day, and then this weekend I was supposed to wrestle at FSW for the Women's Championship in a last woman standing match, and then I was supposed to wrestle Shaza McKenzie and you know just so many other opportunities were there and it just really sucks but i also know that this is happening for a reason so just sticking with that mindset is really what's getting me through absolutely and all those matches that you listed all those amazing talents that you listed like those, those some of those women have been on my bucket list for a while to sit down and have conversations with so shaza j rod zeta hit me up pretty nose i'm good i'm good at what i do but <laughs> seriously um you mentioned so many talents and I know you mentioned so many matches that you had to pull out of, but guess what? Here's something that I, maybe you have thought of, maybe you haven't. You're only 19. You're going to come back. You're going to be 20. You're going to have opportunities to have some of those matches back again. And you're going to have opportunities to have you versus Masha Slamovich part two. You're going to have options to have another last woman standing match. You're going to have options to go at Maggie Lee in that steel cage and get that title back. You're going to have options to wrestle Zeta again. You're going to wrestle Shaza again. There's going to be opportunities again. The good thing is, is it's not the end. It's just a pause. Put it this way. It's like you pause the game of WWE 2K. You put it down. You're going to go eat dinner. You're going to chill out. You're going to work out. You're going to come back, pick up the controller. You're going to be right where you left off. That's what it is. It's another stumbling block in your journey. So keep that up. Keep that faith. And this conversation has been so incredible. I can't believe we've already killed off a half an hour. But I, 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 I guess I have one more question for you. And then I'll let you go enjoy the rest of your evening and the dry Phoenix air and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What is it like when you have a young fan come up to you, a little girl, little boy, whatever, 
and they hug you and they say, oh my God, you're my favorite. You're my superhero. Like to, to literally have a young fan that you were literally only 10 years ago, that young fan's age, or maybe younger, to come up to you and, and hug you and say, thank you. You inspire me, all that. How is it to once have inspiration inspire you and now you be the inspiration to inspire the next generation it's got to be fucking cool man it's insane like just coming out and i did the little bret hart thing where i put the glasses on the little girls like that is so special to me i remember the first time i met the bella twins um i was literally shaking like i couldn't even speak to them and now to be that for somebody like i'll have little girls and their parents will call me like she loves you so much, but she's like afraid to talk to you. That's exactly how I was. And it's just so special to think that I have that type of impact on people. Cause that's really why I'm doing this to make people feel the way that I felt when I watched, you know, my heroes go out there and to be that for somebody. I know I'm not on a great big scale yet, but to one day reach that many people, hopefully, is literally the name of the game and why I do it and it's just it's so fulfilling and it feels like you know my life has meaning and purpose and that's you know what we all strive for as humans why are we on this earth and I genuinely think that the reason why I have been placed on this earth is to inspire people and to make those little boys and little girls you know feel something and feel like I can be their superhero and the person that they look up to. So that's honestly, it's the best feeling in the world when someone comes up to me and they say that, you know, I'm their favorite and, you know, they're inspired by me. There's been quite a few people too that like, luckily um, my school in Arizona, I've wrestled shows and like genuinely they'll come up and be like, I want to do this. How do I start? And I give them the business card. And next thing you know, they're at like they're at training and there was like a couple of them that started wrestling and it's just the coolest thing to see like I never thought that I could be the reason why they started wrestling you know just to give them that information and have them you know take it and show up is was so special so yeah I love that I love that mm -hmm. are you are you sure you're 19 because I mean you are wide <laughs> on your ears my dear I gotta give you I gotta give you credit for that you're an incredible Thank person you. to speak to I was a fan of you as a wrestler now I could say I'm a fan of you as a person as well. You are phenomenal. You are very special. Tell mom and dad Brooks they killed it, raising one hell of a human being. Okay? You tell Thank them that. You. I, I hope my daughters can be as amazing as you are when they get older. And I know they will. I absolutely know they will. Before you go, do me a favor. Look at the camera. Give me that Brittany Brooks energy and tell everyone you had a great time with Straight Talk. At least I hope you did. And they should subscribe because there's always great conversations like this one. I had a great time here at Straight Talk Wrestling. Make sure you subscribe so then you can see all these really cool videos just like this one. I like that. Well, you, yeah, you have the flavor and everything. I love it. Incredible. Brittany, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak with me today. I appreciate you. And again, you are now officially a member of the Straight Talk family. So anytime you want to come back, you're more than welcome. Tell you what, let's make a plan. When you're ready for your in-ring return and you're ready to get that title back, no matter who's holding it, you come back and we'll talk all about your journey back to the squared circle. How does that sound? Absolutely. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much for having me. All right. That's it for this one, guys. Peace, love, and wrestling. We'll see you next week. Peace. Thank you so much for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw today, please feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss any of our future videos and content. Also, you can follow us on all social media platforms on X at underscore Straight Talk, on Facebook and Instagram at Straight Talk Wrestling, on TikTok at Straight underscore Talk underscore Wrestling. And of course, you could follow us on Podbean and you could check us out on Sunday Night Main Events, Free Feed, and Patreon. Thank you. Oh,